Hey guys, in this tutorial today, what I'm going to be doing is making this drawing rack here with this bug. So I'll show you a, another view that we have here. This is an exploded view where we have our different components showing how they're separate and then at some point go together. So let's jump straight into the SOLIDWORKS. So to start off with, we have our part here. I'm going to go back to our first sketch or drawing here. And this mainframe, I'm going to start by doing a sketch of the top. So using our top plane tool, let's say it's 100. It could be way bigger than this but we're going to flow with it. Now these cross sections here that I'm doing, this entire thing that I just made is going to be for reference. And then these center guys here, I'm going to connect to the middle. And this is just going to make the other processes a little bit easier. Now, instead of doing a 3D sketch or doing this entire thing at once, so this entire frame, I'm just going to do this corner here and then mirror it. And that's just going to save a ton of time. So if we go from this point here to this point here, we've got a straight edge and then a fillet with another straight line. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Draw a line to here and then a line to there. Come up to here, sketch fillet. Now this is kind of massive compared to what we have going on here. So let's try three mils. That looks pretty good. So we'll close this down. And then before moving on, I'm going to make a point, use this point feature here, make a point there and a point there. And then we can close our sketch. So there's our top view. Next, what I'm going to work on is this view right here. So this is going to be our front view. So if we go to our front plane, and then see how it snaps to that point there? Let's say this is going to be 10. And then it's snapping to that point there. So that's good. Now, if we go back to this drawing here, we'll notice that there's not a line sticking up here. I'm just using this one for construction. And then we can also set what angle we want here. So let's go with a 45 degree angle. A sketch, fillet thing, and then make, let's make this one five. That looks pretty good. So we've got this sketch here, and we've got this sketch here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to mash them together. But before that, I do that, I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the first sketch. I'm going to create a point here and a point here. Okay, so you see all these points here. Those are going to help us later on. Now to mash these guys together, we're going to go up to curves, project curve, 
and then click this down arrow here, sketch one and then sketch two. Click OK. And then there's our curve there. Now we're going to create the tube, but to do that, I'm going to make our top sketch visible again. And then using this point and using our right plane, I'm going to create a new sketch. Use this circle here. And then let's make it two mil. I'm going to exit the sketch now. So we've got our circle here and then our curve here. We don't need this guy anymore. So I just clicked the eyeball tool here to hide it. Now what I'm going to do is do a sweep by clicking on this circle here, clicking on our curve here, and then bam, there we go. So we don't need to see this guy anymore. So I'm going to hide that guy too. So there's our first corner. Now up in features, there's a tool here called linear pattern. But if you click the down arrow, there's the mirror. I'm going to mirror using this face here. And then oftentimes it will say features. But for now, what I'm going to do is mirror the bodies here. And then you can do full preview if you want. It doesn't always work when you're doing something like this. But that's what it looks like once you're done. And then we'll do it one more time. I'll click this circle here, mirror bodies. And then bam, there we go. So there's our main frame. I'm going to save this guy now. So this is good to go. Next, we can go on to creating our spindles. I don't know what's happening with these spindles here. So I'm just going to improvise. So I'll create a new part. And then with creating this feature, I'm going to try to keep with what the planes and everything look like for our mainframe. So I'm going to start a sketch with our front plane here. Let's make this guy one mil. In reality, it will never be one mil. At least I don't think so. But who knows? Uh, I'm going to extrude it. That's good. Next time we go to our right plane here. Create a new sketch. And then I'm going to start where this red arrow guy is here. And I'm going to select what our cut is going to be. So if we look at our drawings here, we can see that there is a little bit of a profile here. I'm not sure if you can see that. But you can see slight profile. So I'm going to create that profile here. Let's make this guy 45. 50 is fine, actually. Let's go 50. And then what I'm going to do here is select this midpoint here and then select this midpoint here. Now, with what I'm doing, I'm going to make this for construction and then mirror this guy over. It's very important that you have it snap to these midpoints. And I'll show you why in just one second. So mirroring those guys. There we go. And then an extrude cut. Both directions. That looks good. Now I'm going to come back to our mainframe and then come to our first sketch to get the dimension. 
So this overall dimension is 70 mils. So that's how long our rod needs to be. So let's make this guy 70. That looks good. Now, what you'll see here is when I went to change the length of this guy, this cut stayed on the end of this one and this cut stayed here. If I didn't use the midpoint, you'd have a cut that would be partly through the part here and then you'd have two separate pieces and then you'd have to go in and change your sketch. But by selecting the midpoint, you can adjust the length and then it automatically does the rest of the work. So this looks good. I'm gonna save it. And then before I move on, let me come back to our sketch. And then I'm going to make these midpoints again. Actually, I don't want that sketch. I want this sketch. So I'm going to create a point here. And then I'm going to create another point right here. And we can hide those guys. Control S. So that's good. Now let's put these uh, pieces together. So creating a new assembly. Now, since I don't need to move the main frame once it's in place, but the spindles I do need to manipulate, I'm going to put the main frame in first. That looks good. Next one I'm going to do is insert our spindles. That's good. Now, before I move on, I'm going to lock this guy into position. So just to help things out, I might need to move this guy again. That's fine. Okay, so that's good. I'm going to create a mate for the planes. So if I go into the spindle here, the drop down menu, the let's do the top plane first, and then this top plane of our assembly. I'm going to make them parallel. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing for our right plane. Make these guys parallel. And then this way, the spindle won't end up spinning around. So that's good now. So I'm going to mate this guy to this guy. It wants to do concentric, which is essentially inside the other one. Uh, but it's not going to work because I already locked its faces in planes in position. So I'm going to do tangent and then make sure it's on top here. That's good. And then if you remember before, I added a point on the end of this sketch. So I'm going to show this sketch. Use that point there. And then select this ring right there. And then bam, we have our things attached and it's fully defined. So I can hide this guy now. That's good. And then instead of doing the exact same thing with all the other guys, as we lay them across with different points and whatnot, I'm going to come up to our assembly here, linear pattern. And then I'm going to select this tube here. The arrows facing in the right directions. That's good. And then components to move along and move that guy. And then you can adjust the distance and the number. So if you wanted more, 14 is good. I'll leave it at that. And then there you go. There's our 
dish rack. So I'm gonna save this guy. I'm gonna save it week four. Okay, so here's our full assembly. But before moving on, if we go back to these drawings here, you'll notice that there's this exploded view. So I'll quickly touch on that. So to do our exploded view, in assembly up here, there's this feature called exploded view. And then what we'll do is we'll come down to the bottom here. It's going to let me select all of them. Maybe. No. Sweet. Okay. So using the shift button on my keyboard, I clicked the first one and the last one. And then holding control, I'm going to select our first one here. That looks good. And then we can pull this guy straight up. Here, you can set the offset. Let's set it to 20. Doesn't really matter at this point. And then if you had animations or whatnot, you could add multiple steps. We're just keeping it simple today, so that's good. Clicking OK. And then I'm going to save this. And then if we come back, we have our mug now. Now, since we have this drawing with a mug, and then this drawing without a mug, and the ex but there's an exploded view. I'm going to create a new assembly specifically for the mug. So I'm going to come up to File, New Assembly, Rack Assembly. That's good. And then I'm going to bring the mug in. So that's from our week three. Bring this guy in. Now, if you're bringing your bug in, you might find that it might be absolutely massive compared to this overall rack. So in order to change the mug, it's, you think it would be in edit where it should be, but the setting to scale different features in an assembly, you have to go to insert. Uh, but before you do that, you need to edit, edit part. So I'm going to take this back to week four. Okay, so we have our mug here. If it's really big or really small, you can come up to insert. And then you'd think it'd be in some of these other things, but it's actually in mold. There's this scale function here. Now I've already scaled it, but this is what it would look like. Oh. Let's go back here. So before it looked something like, I think it was 70. Now this is huge. Like I can't even see, I can't even see my rack. So what I'm gonna do is come back to insert Scale, take it down by now that's still too big, so I'm going to take it down even more. And then 25, 
And then that looks, that looks a bit right. That's reasonable. So we'll unedit component. And then we'll mate these guys together. So select the bottom. Select this one. That's good. Select one more. And then if I use the space bar again to the side here, you'll notice that it slides across, but it doesn't go up and down. So that is all good to go. So I'll clean this up. And then next we can create our assembly drawings. So if we go up to file here, make drawings from assembly. I don't want to select these ones because I already have one for the course that I want to use. So I'll select this handy dandy drawing here. Now to use the one from the course, I had to cut the letters that were at the back of this file and then change it to these letters here in order for SolidWorks to open it as a template. So we'll click open, click OK. And then we have these question marks here. Let me get rid of them by going to sheet format, edit, and then deleting these guys. And then unedit. So that's good. We have our drawing here. And then when we come up to here, this has our cup and rack. I'll click refresh. And then we can come back to our drawings here. We need a top view and we need a side view, ISO and our bill of materials. So we'll do, I already forget our top view first. Okay. So we'll start with our top view. We'll do our side view. And then isometric view. And then we need our build materials. So with uh, this one, because it's our ISO, we can make it look pretty. With these other ones, it's better practice to leave them as is without shading. And then if we come up to annotations, tables, and then go to build materials. There's our build materials. So we have 14 spindles, mainframe. Uh, you could go in and edit this. I'm going to leave it as is for now. And then our scales are good. One to one. I'm going to edit this to you. Should be all the captains. Oh, it's being temperamental again. It really doesn't like this one. Ah, oh, there we go. And then today's date is February. Eighth. Twenty twenty one COVID take two. Okay, so we have two sheets in this. Uh, we don't have twenty one. Okay, so that's good. 
We've got our first page here. Next one I'm going to do is come down to the bottom here, add one more page, delete these guys, and then coming over to here, So in this drawing, we just have the rack assembly. We don't have a cup. So click the rack assembly. And then here's our exploded view. What other views does he want? Just an exploded view. OK, and a bill of materials. We can do that. So our scale, I'm going to change this to being bigger. And then go to annotation, general table, and then no, I want a bill of materials. And then there we go. There's your second page. You can go back and edit all this stuff. I'm not going to edit it for now. We'll go to our front page. And then this is, this is what we are wanting to create. And this is what we got. So hope this helps you with making your SolidWorks dish rack. And thanks for watching.